esoteric and mystical as sunbeams are, they are the energy driver of the planet. But if I asked you to go out and grab me some sunbeams, you know, children, they'll take you up on this. They'll dance around a little while and try to grab them, but, but they can't. The fact is, something as esoteric and mystical as sunbeams is captured by nature's photovoltaic array called photosynthesis through the chlorophyll of plants, and specifically grass. So, the problem is that most of us are quite disconnected from grass. When I say grass, you know, people immediately think of lawns, golf courses, maybe a soccer field. But you're not thinking about the kind of grass that the Knights of the Golden Horseshoe found in the early 1700s when the colonial governor of Virginia sent them across the Blue Ridge to discover what was there. And what they found, they said everywhere we rode, we could take the grass and tie it in a knot above the horse's saddle. It was a magnificent silvopasture of elk, deer, passenger pigeons, prairie chickens, pheasant, turkey, and bison, up to herds of three to four million. The legacy of these migratory herds that were moved by both natural and Native American lit fires as a landscape choreography, and these migratory patterns where they moved thousands of miles created the soils that we are mining today and that we already mined in Virginia up to three feet of topsoil washed off of Virginia and is still washing off today because we have turned this beautiful perennial based system into an annually based tillage system which is highly erosive. So how does nature actually work? Sunbeams come down, it's captured by photosynthesis and converted into biomass, vegetable material. And if we look at the different kinds of plants, trees, bushes, and grass, intuitively, we think it's the most efficacious plant to collect these sunbeams and sequester the carbon. Your mind tends to go to trees, but in actuality, trees are the least efficient. Brush is more efficient, and then the pinnacle is grass. When you look at a forest, you're seeing 50 to 80, maybe 100 years of stored carbon all standing visible you're not seeing 80 years of grass visible at one time. Grass goes through a growth cycle. It starts slow and then it accelerates and then it goes into senescence. So the three stages of grass I call diaper stage. In this pot, I have freshly eaten diaper stage, infant grass. It's just been grazed and it's coming back. Here, I have teenage grass, juvenile, fast growth grass. And then we come into what I call nursing home grass, senescence, the end. The role of the herbivore in nature, I'm concentrating on this because herbivores have gotten a bad rap in recent days. Cows, climate change, and all that. You see, the data points to study the effect of cows on the environment are all coming from a position that does not respect the herbivore in its classic role. The role of the herbivore and the reason the planet is so full of herbivores is because without them, this biomass would simply turn into to senescent material and just volatilize and die and quit growing. So the role of the herbivore is to take this as it approaches senescence, prune it back. That's good stewardship. They prune this back to restart this rapid biomass production. Without them, it stops. How do we duplicate this if we don't have migratory patterns? If we don't have 4 million buffalo in a herd? If we don't have wolves chasing them? If we don't have the magnificent, amazing choreography of nature that built the soils that we're still mining today? Well, we do it with high-tech electric fencing. Space-age microchipped electric fencing. It's almost invisible to the eye, and we can encircle a herd of a thousand with wire, practically invisible. But because it's such a strong psychological barrier, the cows learn. It allows us to duplicate this mobbed movement that they would have had in eons before we had private land. We call this mob stocking herbivorous solar conversion lignified carbon sequestration. So as the biomass gets to this point, we prune it back with the herbivore, and then it begins to grow. And as the leaf area get more and more chlorophyll, growth accelerates, and then it slows off. What we're doing is using the herbivore in its historic role, using high-tech electric fencing to leverage and stimulate biomass production. Where I live, in Augusta County, the average pasture biomass production on the average acre of grass is 2,500 pounds 
pounds per year. On our farm, we've been there almost 60 years. We've never planted a seed. We've never bought a bag of chemical fertilizer. We average well over 10,000 pounds. We're all familiar with the tension between ecology and economy. We can't be environmentally sensitive unless we sacrifice the economy. And we can't be economically viable unless we sacrifice the environment. And I'm here to present to you the notion as a fact that we can actually have both. But what we have to do is manage things completely differently. The data points that impugn the lowly cow as the destroyer of the planet have the wrong object to have a problem with. The problem is not the herbivore. The herbivore is doing what she's always done, turning carbohydrate, fermenting it into you know, meat and milk, nutrient-dense food. But she's not being managed the way the wild herds and the migratory patterns were managed where the forage go through this 50, 60, 70 day physiological expression cycle and then be pruned back and harvested at the appropriate time. In fact, what happens is on most pastures, the grass never even can grow to this point. It's kept very, very short. It's pruned 20 times in a season, add up all those little couple hundred pounds a time, and it comes out to about 2,500 pounds per year. Instead, we let the forage come way up here to full physiological expression. By denying access, we move the cows every day to a new spot, letting everything else rest and go through this rapid accumulation cycle and what it means is we triple quadruple and even quintuple the amount of forage that can produce on a certain area now that cow is dropping 50 pounds of goodies out her back end every day so just think about what happens when you change it from 4,000 pounds of manure and urine per acre to 20,000 pounds of manure and urine per acre. Suddenly, you have soil building capacity. So here we are not only harvesting way more, but we're sequestering way more carbon. We're using the animal in its historic role. We're honoring and respecting the cowness of the cow. When you feed the herbivore foreign things like grain and you lock them up in a feedlot and you do all the kinds of desecrating things the U.S. duh I call it the U.S. duh for for 30 years laughed at us for doing this they said grind up dead cows feed them back to cows and we were branded luddites and anti-progressives anti-science it's beyond me why we still give these sophisticated agents of our culture the freedom to tell us what to eat and how to eat just imagine if all of our neighbors did this instead of continuous grazing where they just turn, you know, 50 cows into 100 acres and just leave them all year and the grass can never get above diaper grass. It never accelerates. It, it can't. But if we control it so that the animals only access a tiny little spot each day, guess what? Now we've got moles and voles. We've got bird nesting sites. We've got a continuous mosaic of pollination of blossoms, red clover, white clover, and dandelions that are for pollinators. You've got all sorts of growth going on below the ground because now we have this biology. The soil cools down because it's got all this nice, cool mulch that's transpiring, oxygenating, and I'm inhaling the oxygen out of this plant, and then and it's inhaling my carbon dioxide. I mean, isn't that cool? What if UVA would serve this kind of meat instead of the concentration camp meat? What if you ate this? And what if I ate this as a blessed way to participate in the most healing, amazing, nurturing choreography of nature? by respecting the cowness of the cow, using her as an herbivore in her historic role and participating in the nurturing of the planet. Thank you for letting me share something that's very simple with you. Thank you so much.